Hello, investors. It's Don Bannon, Board Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, May 20th, 5.18 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from the financial capital of the world, St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with the big show, the Friday edition of the Revere Market Insight video, where we take a look back at the prior week, take a look ahead at key levels for next week, and inadvertently update the 21 over 21 leaders list. If you've been following me, you know I've been doing a fab 40 list that really wasn't so fab. Some of them were expected to come off. Other ones were really not leaders. But how do you get a 21 over 21 list from a fab 40 list? Well, 19 stocks fail. Uh, their charts fail and uh, 40 minus 19 is 21. So we're left with 21 stocks from last week's list. Not necessarily all leaders but we will review the survivors as well as the ones that got cut. So uh, one of the things that I mentioned with this 40 list is I would expect that these, a lot of these staples type stocks that really are defensive and not leaders would get cut off. And uh, man, that really happened on Thursday of this week with, or sorry, Wednesday with a massive move down in staple stocks. And you'll see when we take a look at the charts there. So state of the market, we are in a correction. We had a follow through day earlier this week, but it uh, on a Tuesday, but that failed badly on Wednesday. And uh, we're starting again. This is day one off the lows. But you can see over here by the trend, we're still completely bearish across uh, leadership and across all three time frames. This means all five of the major indexes that we discuss in these videos are trending below their short-term 21-day exponential moving average, their medium-term 50-day moving average, and their long-term 200-day moving average. So what just happened today? Uh, new correction lows, we were down 2.3% intraday, really stretched. And then we had a positive reversal off of this big support level. So, uh, and then a big, uh, all right, I got interrupted. Where was I? New correction lows down 2.3%, but big positive reversal off this 3810 confluence of various support levels which we'll talk about too and we actually took a long off of that level so uh for the day G6 down 0.32% S&P just about flat Nasdaq 100 down 3 tenths was down over I think almost 3% at one point Dow about flat mid caps down a third Russell 2000 down 0.2% Global diversified 60-40 stock and bond up a quarter percent. Grotection up 0.21 percent. So uh, let's get to the tail of the tape and let's get to the charts. But first, let's get to the team here at Revere. Trend following is what we do. Participate in market uptrends. Uh, lighten the load during sideways consolidations and get the heck out of the way during downtrends. Get the heck out of the way is really, uh, we're really happy with uh, how this year has unfolded for us. We don't like the fact that we're down on the year, but uh, take a look at these numbers. We've, with the S&P as of today's close, down 18.14%. Uh, we started the year at over $120 million in assets under management. So with us being down 6.3% on the year versus the S&P, we've saved our clients over $15.6 million. That's a lot of money. When you consider, uh, suppose you started the year with a uh, million dollars in your account. If you were all in the S&P 500, you'd have almost 819,000 with us 948,000 that's a savings of 129,000 almost 130,000 on a million dollar account half a million dollar account S&P you're down to 409,000 protection 474 save a half a million dollar client $65,000 $100,000 account S&P 80 about 82,000 Grotection, 94.8, save you $13,000. This all adds up. We've got many various uh, size clients. And, you know, you add it all up, that's a lot of money. That's that's significant. And we're very proud uh, that our sell rules 
we've we've had our ups, we've had our downs. We underperformed in 2021 uh, in um, February, March, and April. We adjusted our process, and it's done very well relative to the S and P since then. So, uh, getting the heck out of the way, allowing people to sleep at night. Uh, this is makes us uh, makes our efforts uh, certainly worthwhile when we see things like that and we get the kudos that we do from some of our clients. So thank you very much. So let's move on. Uh, S&P 500, we're going to start here and we're going to bring up the tail of the tape uh, in a correction, the usual headwinds, nothing's changed there. Put call on the high side, we got up to 1.27 today, closed at 1.23. The VIX was over 32, almost 33 today, closed at uh, 29.4 with the strong close. Fear and greed is at 11. Uh, our bull case need to reclaim the 21, initiate a rally. That just failed on 518. Today, 520 is day one off the bottom. Uh, we're operating under this bear case with the rally failure and the confirmation of the breakdown on 518. A little bit of news, China cut rates. Uh, that led to some optimism in the market and uh, we gapped up 1% at the open. What we were watching coming into today uh, was overhead resistance, which broke badly yesterday at 3940 when we closed yesterday at 3901. Uh, and support in this level, 3813 to 3859. And we're going to detail a little bit down below uh, why that we use that range. So the gap up failed immediately at resistance. We opened at uh, 3940, got as high as 3943, and that was it. We just had three waves down intraday to where we were down 2.3%. And then at 130, everybody was sold out. We had a positive reversal, a uh, little bit of chop, but then a strong close all the way up to flat, closing basically right where we opened at 3901. Uh, so strong reversal off of support. Let's talk a little bit more about this support level. So why are we looking at 38.13 to 38.59? Well, 38.59 was the prior low uh, when we pulled back. Uh, let's see, low 38.76 there. 30. 38.59 right here. This was the prior low uh, from this shakeout on 6.12. Now also, this big clump of uh, support levels here, 38.13 is the S&P 500 minus 20% year to date level. Uh, 38.15 is a 38.2%, that's a big Fibonacci retracement level from the COVID low to the high uh, late last year, or maybe it was January, uh, early January, I'm not sure which one, but it was a big level, 38.2%. Uh, and then 3837, 3855, those are 20% off of the all time high close and the all time high uh, from uh, earlier this year. So we Touched all of these on 520. Additionally, 3819 is this S&P 500 30 month uh, support level. So, with this big confluence here, when we briefly undercut it, reclaimed it, and now let's look at a five minute chart on the S&P 500. So here's the reclaim. Here's the quick undercut and reclaim, and then we tried to pull back and test it in this 3820 ish level, and to 3825 started to act support and. That's what you look for when you look at a level that you think you might stop going down at. Uh, and all we're looking at is risk reward when we take these longs. But when we saw the retrace and we couldn't do anything with it, we broke back above the prior high, retraced again, back above again. This is where we put uh, the SSO trade on. Uh, it was actually about 38.30 ish where we put it on. So the best trades work right away. We're uh, positive in this trade right away, and our stop would be. Uh, a low below uh, today's low, 38.10, maybe down to 38.100. We usually give a little bit of room uh, for all the stops that are right below 38.10. We don't want to get stopped out right where everybody else is. So that is the rationale with uh, this big area of support here around this 38.10-ish level. Uh, so that was why we took this long, got our uh, adjusted beta up to 0.20. We still have 80% cash. 
Uh, we also own an oil ETF, FCG, and we have 10% still in our short-term uh, inflation-protected bond fund. So also uh, intraday, we hit minus 11.4% below the 50-day moving average, and that was the biggest uh, drawdown since the correction started. So when I started seeing numbers like this, along with this big level of support, it just puts the odds in your favor uh, when you're so far stretched to the downside. The risk reward is just there. Uh, also factoring in that today's close gave us eight weeks down on the Dow, seven weeks down on the S&P 500 and the NAS, which is uh, really bad. We didn't hit this during COVID. We didn't hit this during 2007, 2008. So uh, at some point you just got to, all the sellers just got to get exhausted and uh, there's nowhere to go but up. But, um, and that's kind of what happened on uh, 512 where we had three days up after that before making new lows. And uh, we're not married to this long. If it fails into some of these resistance levels that we're going to work on over the weekend, then we'll just book a small profit and be done with it. So bottom line, you got to start somewhere. Positive reversal off a of 3810 support. That's where we are. That's the big level to look at for next week. Um, we're going to watch this 8 EMA, which is currently at 3972. And then, of course, this big 21 day exponential moving average, which is going to be below the prior high here from earlier in the week at 4091. Uh, right now it's at 4088 and it'll be uh, a few points lower when we open on Monday. So that's the key level that we're going to be looking at uh, for next week on the upside and also today's lows on the downside. Let's go to the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, very similar pattern, undercut, didn't quite finish positive. You're, we're, we're, this pattern looks virtually identical to what's going on with the S&P 500. Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, again, undercut and actually undercut yesterday, undercut again today, and uh, same setup as the other two big cap indexes. Let's go to mid caps. Uh, did not undercut today, so showing some relative strength there. You can see we've been showing relative strength off the bottom since the first week in April uh, on these mid caps and also on small caps. Did not undercut the way the big caps did relative strength over the last week and a half there. So uh, that's what we're watching for going into next week, and um, we'll have our alert set and keep an eye on those levels. So let's get now to uh, some the remaining 21 over 21, and first let's look at the 19 stocks that got devastated uh, this week. Let's put them. Let's sort them relative to their 21-day exponential moving average and the best first and the weakest last so here's t-mobile uh broke below the broke below the 50 broke below the 21 still holding the 200 this is actually not a bad setup you can see uh market smith pattern recognition has identified a cup and handle we've got an alert set above the 50 day uh should this start to write itself is it is showing uh relative strength you can see that by the relative strength line its earnings were uh pretty good so uh, it's off the list for now, but we're keeping an eye on it with an alert set. Northrop Grumman, still the strongest of the defense stocks, but defense, defense stocks have been weak this week. Let's reinstate our alert at uh, 4050. That got broken today below the 21 and the 50, but again, sh showing some relative strength, but still booted off the list. Waste management. Uh, not a hard decision on this one. Broke below all the levels. Let's reinstate our alert above the 200 day for that one also cf uh holding up very well I actually commented uh earlier today to the fellas that uh this was holding up tight around the 8 the 21 and the 50 then it broke down below it uh we've got alert set for this and uh reinstating them but again fell off the list because it's below the moving averages uh kellogg's this is what I was talking about with Staples failing badly on Wednesday, following through on Thursday and Friday. This one held the 50-day, but that's a broken chart. Uh, big selling here the last three days, which hit a lot of Staples stocks. IBM, 
Money's got to hide somewhere in tech. Well, not in IBM the last three days as it pierced all moving averages. Do note, though, relative strength still continuing to show it. So most of these that have been on the, the Fab 40 list were showing relative strength. Some of them just uh, weakened this week and broke the moving averages. So we're looking for the survivors. Pepsi, massive uh, down day, over 6% for for a staple, really. Breaking below all moving averages, held this 160 level, which is actually pretty good support, but we don't play things like that. Coke, same thing, big down day on Wednesday. One of our favorite uh, chip stocks, Broadcom, just gave it up on, uh, broke below the 200-day moving average. Big hammer put in today. This looks like a real uh, serious shakeout all the way down to this 513 level. Uh, we've got our alert set if it gets gets back above the 200-day moving average to be get back on our radar. Mondelez. Uh, food stock, huge down day on Wednesday. So many of these down over 7%. So many of these quote unquote defensive names uh, just got demolished and that's why we don't play in those. They're not leaders. They're a place to hide your money until you get a big down day that gets rid of your prior three to four weeks. So I'm not gonna, just not going to play them. General Mills, another one broke, bounced at the, one, uh, at the 200 day. Hershey, another one that broke. Mattel. Another one that broke, bounced at the 200. Kimberly Clark, another one that broke below the 200 and the 50-day moving average. Louisiana Pacific, a little bit of strength coming into some building stocks. At least they stopped going down. Uh, this is a lumber uh, stock and uh, broke the 200-day moving average, punted off the list. Procter & Gamble gave it up uh, on Wednesday along with uh, so many other staple stocks, including Kraft Heinz gave it up, Ulta gave it up, and Dollar Tree gave it up. These gap down on the horrible uh, Target and Walmart earnings hanging around the 200-day moving average, but broken charts for now. So what survived? Uh, we've got eight sectors and 15 industry groups. We're going to sort these by three-month relative strength, so the best will be at the top, and then at the bottom is our one lone semiconductor that seems to be acting well. So Dow Chemical, we see a lot of chemical stocks kind of acting well and showing relative strength. They're not really leaders. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see them fall off. Don't really have plans to buy any of them, but this is what's surviving for now. And why did we jump down there? Three month relative strength. Okay, let's go back to GOGL. Uh, near all time highs, this is a shipping stock. The shipping stocks have been holding up extremely well with relative strength and good fundamentals. CC, here's another chemical company holding above its breakout level. LNTH, a medical product company, this has been just showing great relative strength since its gap up two earnings reports ago, holding above its moving averages. Occidental, one of the strongest oil stocks, held to 21. Lithium stock, LTHM, uh, holding its moving averages as it forms a cup base. Devon Energy, one of the strongest energy stocks near all-time highs. Olin Corp, another chemical stock holding above its 21. AMR, a coal stock sitting right on its 21. Arch, another coal stock, same thing on its 21. Merck acting fantastic, and uh, they got some good news on some heart drugs coming out. Great relative strength near all-time highs. Uh, Starbulk, this is a shipper near all-time highs. WDC, Western Digital, not the best pattern, kind of choppy, gapped up on earnings, holding the 21. Exxon Mobil, one of the strongest integrated oil stocks near all-time highs. Amcor AMCR, packaging company, holding above its breakout level, AT&T. AT&T, how about you? Uh, showing some relative strength after being a dog for basically forever. Dow Chemical holding above the 21. Chevron holding, sitting right on the 21 and the 50. McKesson, it's a medical company, uh, sitting right on the 21, bounced off the 50. Zim, another shipper uh, near the 21 and 50. Eli Lilly continues to show relative strength, dipped below the 50 day yesterday, reclaimed it today. Nice relative strength. And the last semiconductor that seems to be holding above uh, the 221 and the 50 confluence right there, ON Semiconductor, showing relative strength. Let's see how the SOX is holding up versus, uh, note how this continues to show relative strength versus the S&P 500. It's very subtle, 
but it's there for the last three weeks. And basically that means that semiconductor stocks have kind of stopped going down. Uh, at least they're going sideways and showing a little bit of relative strength. Um, we're always looking for signs of relative strength. And uh, when you see it in something that there's a severe shortage of in the world that everybody knows about, they certainly are not lacking customers. And um, we're keeping an eye, our eye on the semis. That's going to wrap it. As always, love to hear feedback from you. Uh, I am, you can email me, donnaRiveraAsset.com, or you can phone 855-REAL-WEALTH and talk to Dan. So wrapping up. The week ending March 20th, March 20th, May 20th. This is Don Vandenborg telling it like it is. Thanks for listening and have a great weekend.